What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and in this video I'm going to show you how to get incredible professional sounding voiceovers in your video with any microphone and using just the basic tools you've got in your editing software. This is one of those videos where you might be thinking, I know how to do that, but this is a deeper dive that takes you past the basics and I just know you'll find some helpful information throughout. Either that or you'll just enjoy the ride. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, I've linked everything mentioned in this video in the description box below, and of course this isn't sponsored content, so be sure to show some love for the channel by hitting that notification bell next to your sub button, it just means the world to me, helps the channel, and I just appreciate it. Thank you kindly. So the first thing you really need to do is make sure you're in a good sounding quiet room. If there's anything in the room that's making noise, definitely turn it off if you can hear aircon units, washing machines, you know, closed doors, basically the rule is if you can hear it with your ears, it needs to go. I know this sounds really rudimentary, but trust me, removing noise from audio after the fact is a pain. It's frustrating and quite difficult even using some of the very best noise reduction software. Personally, I use the highly regarded Isotope plugins, which are fantastic. They're very premium, very surgical, but I find even using them, the audio never quite sounds the same once they've been processed. Anyway, now it's time to try some microphones. Let's do it. Your distance from the mic makes a huge difference to the sound quality. The farther away, the more roomy it will sound, so I recommend getting really nice and close. The reasons for this are so that things sound less roomy, echoey. Just so you know, for this example, I'm using my Deity D4 Duo, which I wouldn't usually use to record these videos. I've got an AKG C414 just down here, which is obviously much higher quality. But the first reason that I like to get closer to the mic is so that it doesn't sound quite so roomy and echoey, like you can hear what it sounds like in the room right now. We tend to associate that kind of sound with a lower quality, more sort of amateur production quality. Secondly, it will be richer sounding. As you can probably tell, I've switched back to my AKG C414. That close mic sound that you can hear right now always reminds me of a much more kind of expensive sounding production. It's rich and fat in the bass. And lastly, there's much lower chance of picking up any other noise like ambient sounds or hiss, because inevitably your signal to noise ratio will be much better. It's exactly the same theory as exposing correctly on your camera. Give your camera sensor plenty of light and you can turn your ISO down and you get a cleaner looking image. Next, this is actually the Rode Video Micro and it's a really inexpensive mic. Yet nice and close, it sounds pretty good. I have reviewed both the Rode Video Micro and the Dirty D4 Duo, you should check them out, I will link them below and, you know, up here as well. Now this is the Rode Video Mic Pro, I'm about six inches away from the front and I just want to show you that it really doesn't matter which mic you use these days, they pretty much all sound good and I know that tons of people have this mic. And this is the last mic I'm going to show you, it's the Tascam DR40 and I've put it all the way over on the opposite side of the room so you can see it sounds pretty horrible. I'm just using the internal mic which is a stereo mic and um, I'm going to go get it and show you the difference between, you know, mic being over there and close mic. So here we have the close mic version, I'm about six inches away, probably sounds really good and really rich and bassy. However, the last thing you want to do in this mode is get too close, keep talking, and have it distort and not sound that good, right? Now, I would really recommend getting one of these pop shields for your microphone if it doesn't come with one already. Some microphones do, like Rode's NT-USB has one built in. Personally, I prefer one that's separate because it's way more adjustable. You can clip it to a mic stand and it's you can set it to the right distance. Uh, it's much more handy. They're really inexpensive to buy if you don't have one. The one thing I'd recommend is to get one where this front part is made of material rather than the metal grill type. In my experience, the metal ones give you this kind of weird, high frequency, very audible comb filtering kind of sound and I just find you can't remove that in editing. Anyway, next, let's record some voiceovers. Okay, so now in Final Cut, and I want to record my voiceover, the first thing to do is to open up the voiceover window, and we can do that by hitting Option Command 8, or we can find it up the top in Window, and then Record Voiceover. From this panel, we can record, we can make sure that the audio is going to the right place, and we can check that our volume is correct. 
As you can see, the input I'm using is the SPL Crimson. That's my external audio interface. So this is gonna be whatever you're using. It might be internal audio. It might be the microphone if you're using a USB microphone. One thing I like to do is uncheck the countdown to record button. I just find that a bit annoying. I like to just click and then go. You'd usually want to have mute project whilst recording, but obviously you don't have to. Personally, I find that a little bit distracting. And of course, I'm making sure it goes into the right folder. It gets going into my voiceover tips video event. The next thing to look at is the level. And as you can see, this is quite a low level. So I'm gonna turn it up to make it a healthy level. Okay, so I've adjusted my preamp and as you can see, it's way too loud. You can see on the right hand side here, it's actually clipping. So when I go to record my voiceover, I will have ruined it because this area here, all of the clipped bits will be basically ruined. It will be, it's a bit like having clipped highlights in your video. You just can't recover it. Okay, so I've turned my preamp down and you can see I've got a nice strong level, but it's not clipping. One thing I'd say is to click here and that removes that clip warning. So if it happens again, you can see that it's happened. So I think we're ready, let's go ahead. Hey, it's half here, and this is me doing a voiceover over this clip of me holding a pop filter, which everyone should get. And so there we go, that's that done. And you can see there are a few bits here which look a little bit loud. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna close the voiceover window for now, and then I'm just gonna click here and this, uh, this shows the levels, or you can, you can click it again to get rid of them. And with that on the right hand side here, I'm just gonna play it back just to check that it's not too loud and not clipping. Hey, it's half here, and this is me doing a voiceover over this clip. Oh, and no, it's absolutely fine. You can see here where it says minus six, that's, that shows the peak volume. And as long as you haven't gone over zero, then you're fine. That's gonna be good sounding audio. I would say as a rule, minus six is a really, really good area to aim for if you're doing a voiceover. Next, I wanna show you how I post process my voiceovers to get them sounding the best they can. I'm from an audio background, so this really is an area that I'm super comfortable with. Let me show you how it's done. Here we are again in Final Cut, and I'm gonna click on our clip to select it, and then open up the effects browser. The first thing I wanna do is tackle the EQ. Think of EQ as being similar to doing a color correction with your video footage. Firstly, I'd advise you never use presets when it comes to EQ, and a really powerful thing that this has is the analyzer function. So clicking on that displays all of the frequencies going on in your voiceover those low bass frequencies on the left and the high frequencies on the right. First thing I wanna do is actually add a low cut. And this may seem counterintuitive because bassy sounds good, but I would say arguably anything under 100 hertz is that kind of sub bass, which is almost inaudible. So I've got it set up so the EQ will do a smooth roll off of those low frequencies. So next I'm gonna work my way up and make some small adjustments. A good frequency to look at is around 250 hertz. If you boost it and then have a listen, you'll hear this weird kind of boxy frequency. All you need to do is find the right frequency and then dip it down. This should lessen that frequency and you should notice a nice increase in sound quality. Next, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but around one and a half thousand to two and a half thousand hertz. This is a particularly kind of nasal spiky frequency that's just horrible. Again, I'm gonna sweep through the frequencies looking for the right one and then duck it down. Next, I want to add a boost to the high frequencies and this is sometimes called the air frequencies because it adds that kind of crisp brightness that you get and it really just adds polish to your sound. Personally, I like a gentle slope from about eight to 9,000 Hertz. Audibly, this will be probably the biggest difference you can make, but I urge you not to go overboard with this one because it can start to sound a little harsh. Next, I wanna add some compression and the simplest way to do this is just to use limiter. I'll show you how to use it, but just note this is not my favorite option. When you drop it onto your footage and open up the control panel, you can see a few different things that look a little bit confusing. The only control you really need to concern yourself with is the gain control. What this plugin does is pushes the volume higher and higher and it won't let the volume pass a certain threshold. That's why, as you can see, it's called a brick wall. You can see what this does to our waveform when I push the gain higher and higher. You do not want to do this, this would sound horrible. Instead I'd say subtlety is the key, just add maybe a couple of dB. That's probably enough and it won't allow anything to clip. 
If, like me, you find the limiter to be a bit of a blunt instrument, I would highly recommend using compressor instead. Now, they've made it look fairly complex, but it really isn't. The first thing I like to do is change the mode, and for vocals, I like vintage opto. It's just a personal preference thing. Now, on this, there's only three dials I want you to worry about, and that's the threshold, which determines at what volume the compression will kick in. Ratio, which determines how aggressive the compression is. And then makeup, which just lets you add a little bit more gain once the compression is done. After all, compression is a gain reduction plugin, making your loud bits quieter and your quiet bits louder, but overall your volume will reduce. I would recommend turning on the limiter on this plugin. This just gives me that peace of mind that if anything gets too loud, it will catch it before it clips. So most of the time for vocals, I leave the ratio on two to one because that is in my eyes, perfect. Then all I need to do is play my audio and then adjust the threshold. Further towards zero will be more subtle and anti-clockwise will be much more aggressive. Looking at this meter, that's telling us how much volume it's taking off those louder bits. It's somewhere between zero and five decibels, which is exactly what I'm looking for for vocals. All that's left to do is just to add a couple of decibels of makeup gain, and that's just to compensate for the compression. Right now I'm going to turn all the effects off and see what difference they've made. Here it is with no effects. Hey, it's Half here, and this is me doing a voiceover over this clip of me holding a pop filter, which everyone should get. And then with the effects, it sounds like this. Hey, it's Half here, and this is me doing a voiceover over this clip of me holding a pop filter, which everyone should get. A huge difference, as I'm sure you'd agree. EQ and compression, it's all you need. Now it's time to gather up everything of value in this video and distill it into a fine whiskey of tips. Firstly, the room you're in makes a big difference. Make sure it's quiet and that you like the sound of your voice in that room. Overall, personally, I'd say the mic you choose is less important. There are fewer bad microphones around now than ever before. However, your distance from the mic is very important. Too far away and it'll sound thin, roomy and echoey. Too close and it could be too bassy and just could be too loud for the mic. Pop shields are a really good thing to have if you ever do voiceovers. They're cheap and really work to cut down on plosives. Be sure you're getting a nice, strong signal when recording, but of course avoid clipping at all costs. Personally, I always post-process my audio with EQ and compression. Vocals are just so dynamic and benefit so much from that enhancement that it's just a no-brainer. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about anything in this video in the comments section below if you want to. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Yeah.